Hello and welcome to lecture 52 of the course Computational Complexity. We have been seeing the power and complexity of counting over the past few lectures. Um, in this lecture, we will see Toda's theorem, which was a surprising result. And this stated that uh, the entire polynomial hierarchy can be, uh, can be captured with, the, with Sharpie, by Sharpie. Right? So, um, let's see the Let's see the definition. Uh, let's see the statement. So the statement is that polynomial hierarchy is contained in P with a Sharpie oracle, right? So if if there is a a, uh, a Sharpie oracle which can which can answer uh, queries in the uh, from the function plus Sharpie, uh, a polynomial time machine, deterministic polynomial time machine with a Sharpie oracle can simulate uh, polynomial hierarchy, any level of polynomial hierarchy. Right. So, why is this interesting? So, we know we have already seen that Sharpie is at least as powerful as uh, P, NP, BPP, RP, and so on. Right? PP, because if we can count, we can we can decide whether there is at least one accepting path or zero accepting path. So, it's you, you can decide uh, you can make it you can decide an NP language, and certainly you can decide whether at least two thirds. Of the paths are accepting or at most one third so you can decide bpp and similarly you can decide pp rp any of the randomized classes right um, another thing that we know is p uh, with an np oracle right is contained in sigma 2 because p with an np oracle can simulate both np as well as co np so it's it's bigger than or seems to be bigger than np but both NP and co -NP are contained in sigma 2. So, P to the NP is contained in sigma 2. In fact, NP to the NP, we saw that it is, con it is equal to sigma 2. So, now the question is, uh, when we had P with an NP oracle, we, we, we got some language that is, uh, we got a class that is bigger than NP. Now, what if we replace NP with Sharpie here? We know Sharpie can simulate NP, but from sigma 2 in the right hand side, how far do we go, right? So that is the question and the answer as I already stated is that uh, the po entire polynomial hierarchy can be simulated with P um, with access to a Sharpie oracle. So what we will see is that any language in Sharpie, uh, sorry polynomial hierarchy, so the kth level of polynomial hierarchy we can call it sigma k right. So and the complete problem of, in, of that class uh, we already mentioned is, is QK sat right uh, k, with k quantifiers. So let me in this lecture let me just call it sigma k sat, which is the same thing. I'm just calling with a different name, right? So it is satisfiability with k quantifiers, k alternating quantifiers, right? This is the complete problem for the kth level uh, the, of, of sigma k, right? Kth level of the polynomial hierarchy, sigma k. So pi k will have uh, uh, the, the, the negation, um, the compl complement problem of this, right. We will show that this language can be simulated by a polynomial time, deterministic polynomial time Turing machine with access to a Sharpie oracle, right. So, which is what we are saying here. And uh, not only that, a Sharpie oracle, it is a Turing reduction. You could ask multiple queries, right. What we will show is that this oracle, uh, we, we can, we can make with, uh, we, we can, uh, it is enough to just ask one query to this oracle, right? All we need to do is just ask one query, not even multiple queries, right? Right. So now uh, let's see the proof. So I will try to explain uh, the high-level details and then go into the, uh, the 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 final details of the proof. So I'll be happy, and, and the proof is kind of long. It will be spread over two lectures. Uh, I'll be happy. Uh, so please try to understand the high-level picture of the proof first, right? Uh, and then try to understand the low, lower level details, right. So uh, I guess that will give a better understanding of the entire uh, what is going on, right. So let me just, let us just first see some operations, okay. So suppose there is a uh, formula phi that has m satisfying assignments, right. So this is, and phi prime has m prime satisfying assignments. So the objective is to show that if you have phi with m satisfying assignments and phi prime with m prime satisfying assignments, you can do some kind of arithmetic in this Sharpie world. So you can, for instance, you can produce a formula. So consider this AND. 
so you you instantiate phi with the variable set x and phi prime with a different variable set y and take the and of these two vari uh, this this two formula formulas then any satisfying assignment of this phi x and phi prime y has to have it could be any of the satisfying assignments of phi and any of the satisfying assignments of phi prime so and, and x and y are independent set so there is no dependency across right so it could be any one of the m satisfying assignments of phi multiplied by uh, and any of the m prime satisfying assignments of phi prime so the number of satisfying assignments of this formula is m times m prime right so we are trying to show that we can do such arithmetic if you are given a formula with m and formula with m prime then you can do something to produce a formula with m times m prime and similarly if you are uh, you can do this you can instantiate phi and phi prime with the same set of variables right even if it is the same set of variables what you can do is uh, you can do this kind of thing where you and phi x with z or phi uh, phi prime x with z complement right so phi prime is another another uh, formula so either z has to be true or false when z is true uh, it doesn't matter what what uh, phi is right what x x's are chosen as far as this the, the first first clause is always true but when z is uh, z is true then the second clause we need phi prime x to be satisfied so any satisfying assignment of phi prime uh, will have to be uh, will is necessary to satisfy the second clause similarly when z is false the second clause is automatically true but any satisfying assignment of phi is required to satisfy the first clause so so when z is true then the second clause needs to be uh, phi prime needs to be satisfied when z is false the phi needs to be satisfied so this has m plus m prime satisfying assignments right and um, uh, one more point is that we can build a formula that has a constant number of satisfying assignment for any constant so let, let me just show some simple things so just a single variable formula x has one satisfying assignment right something like this x and z or x bar x complement and z complement has two like um, both zero uh, sorry zero one and one zero works uh, are the two satisfying assignments and now you you have two formulas um, that have one and two satisfying assignments now you can multiply to get two and two to get four four uh, four and two to get eight right and then you can get all the powers of two and then you can add to get any natural any positive nat uh, integer or any natural number right so even if you have a formula phi with an unspecified number of uh, satisfying assignments now you can get another formula with let's say phi has x or m number of satisfying assignments we could have another formula with m plus 10 satisfying assignments right because we can make another we can construct another formula that has exactly 10 satisfying assignments and then you can do this add operation so we can get any constant right so you can you can do phi plus 1 or we can we can do a plus 1 operation so to if i had m satisfying assignments then the the you can build a formula that has m plus 1 right so this kind of arithmetic with the uh, with the with the number of satisfying assignments you can do so what what can we do you can do multiplication we can do addition and we can construct all positive integers right so we can do add positive integers okay so we will uh, so coming back to todas todas theorem we will do todas theorem in two parts right so the first part will be covered in this lecture and the second part in the next lecture so consider the language called sharp set or uh, sorry uh, parity set okay so parity set is simply asking right so this this o this, this plus with the circle plus inside the circle is called parity okay it is simply asking if the given formula or it is a class of language or class of formulas that have exactly an odd number of satisfying assignments so any formula it's it has a some number of satisfying assignments that number it could be 0 could be 1 could be 2 power n it could be odd or even so whatever that has odd it is in this parity set and um, 
uh, clearly parity set is contained so it's a language right because it's everything is odd or even right so parity set is a language it's it's not a promise problem or anything right it's not a function as well right um, so anything so clearly parity set is contained in p to the sharp p p with the sharp p oracle because if you can count the number of satisfying assignments all you need to do is just decide whether the count is odd or even right so clearly parity set is in p to the sharp p So, um, so again, our goal was to show that polynomial hierarchy is in P to the sharp P, but this is something that we are just saying, parity, sharp, parity set is in P to the sharp P. And what we will do is to uh, show that any, uh, any quantified Boolean formula with K levels of quantifiers, let's call it, so again, this, this, uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, this language is called sigma k sat, so which has k quantifiers starting with an existential quantifier. We will reduce it to sharp uh, parity set, uh, and this reduction will be a randomized reduction. Okay, so if given k, right, there is a uh, given k where k is the sigma k, the same, k. and given a number m, there is a randomized reduction, uh, randomized polynomial time reduction that given a sigma k instance psi, it outputs a parity set instance a psi. So, you can think of a being the reduction such that the sigma k is it has quantifiers and eventually it has a truth value true or false. If sigma is true or if, if the sigma k instance psi is true, then, then the, 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 the output instance a psi is very likely to be in parity set to be a yes in sense of parity set, meaning it is very likely to be very likely to have an odd um, number of satisfying assignments, right. And notice that ASI is, is just a uh, Boolean formula, it, it does not have quantifiers or anything and, and at the end we are just checking how many satisfying assignments does it have. And similarly when psi is false, the sigma k sat instance psi is false, then ASI will is very unlikely to be in. Uh, parity set and the probability is like with probability 1 minus 1 by 2 power with very high probability it is likely to be uh, this correspondence is maintained. So, it is not a uh, deterministic foolproof correspondence like a s instance here is always mapped to a s instance here, but if psi is true then we are very likely to have a psi being a s instance of parity set and if psi is false we are very likely to have a psi being a no instance of uh, parity set. Okay. Another way to see this is that, so the left hand side we have a sigma k sat instance which is a like arbitrary uh, language from the polynomial hierarchy. So, polynomial hierarchy is contained in BPP with access to a parity uh, p oracle. So, you can think of a parity p oracle instead of an oracle that counts the number of satisfying assignments, an oracle that just tells you um, whether the number of satisfying assignments is odd or even. So, it is a weaker oracle than sharp oracle right? because if you can if you can count you can certainly determine the parity. And now what we are saying is that, but the, the reduction is not deterministic in the sense that it, the reduction is not full foolproof the correspondence allows some error. So, because of that we say it is BPP with access to a uh, parity set oracle. Okay. So, what we are saying here is that polynomial hierarchy is contained in BPP with, uh, with a parity set oracle and what, what was our target? Our target was to show that polynomial hierarchy is contained in p to the uh, uh, sharp p oracle. So, p is a weaker class than bpp seemingly and sharp p is a stronger class than parity p. So, we want to make, uh, we want to come to the deterministic polynomial time, but we, we will, we are okay to use. Um, a counting oracle rather than a parity oracle right so this is what this is this is where we want to go to right so ultimately we will prove uh, the, the statement in the right hand side which is polynomial hierarchy is contained in p to the sharp p but in this lecture we will we will show the first statement okay so in fact uh, like the, this, this reduction that i just said right when psi is true uh, implies uh, a psi is in the yes instance of parity set we have seen as somewhat of a similar statement in one of the previous lectures, right. So, 
the statement being variant Vazirani uh, uh, theorem. So what we showed there was given a Boolean formula, right, phi, uh, right, we can construct a, a, a we, can, we can we have a randomized algorithm to construct another Boolean formula such that if phi is satisfiable, then the other Boolean formula has exactly one satisfying assignment with high probability, right? So it's a unique sat yes instance, right? Unique sat yes instance if phi is satisfiable. Um, sorry, phi is satisfiable, then um, the, the the reduction gives a unique sat instance with a high with with a with a certain probability. If phi is not satisfiable, the reduction will give you a uh, unsatisfiable formula. So if you recall, uh, the, the reduction was something like uh, you, you mapped phi to phi and some, some kind of hash function. So basically, it is phi and something. So whenever the phi was unsatisfiable, the, 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 the formula in the right hand side was also certainly unsatisfiable. It is because it is phi and something, right. And, uh, and the right where n is the number of, so the, the probability of success in the first part was 1 by 8n. The second part was it's always it is, it is a one-sided error, right? And notice that this is uh, so if phi was satisfiable, then it has um, then a phi has exactly one satisfying assignment with with a certain probability. So a phi having one satisfying assignment means it's it's a it's a yes in sense of parity set as well. You, one is an odd number. If phi is not satisfiable then a phi does not have satisfying assignment. So, it is a no instance, right. So, we can actually view it like this. Uh, if phi is satisfiable, then uh, this is, uh, sorry, a phi is a yes instance of parity set. And if phi is um, not satisfiable, then a phi is a, is not in the parity set. But rather, it is a no instance of parity set, right? We can say it like this as well. Because 1 is an odd, odd number and 0 is an even number. And so that is fine. So, with the variant Vazirani lemma we, uh, theorem, we are already somewhat uh, close to here, somewhat, somewhat like what we have here, right? What are the differences? The differences is that variant Vazirani lemma took one simple Boolean formula without any quantifiers. Here we are taking Boolean formula with k quantifiers, everything is quantified, there is no free variables. Second thing is that the probability of success is, is one sided uh, in variant Vazirani. So, the no instances are sure to go to no instances, yes instances are go, go to yes instances with a very small prob with a small probability 1 by 8 n. Whereas here in the, in, the, in the target statement, we, we want the correspondence to be much stronger. The probability that uh, if phi is true, then a phi is in parity set is 1 minus 1 by 2 power m. So, the, we need to do some kind of boosting, right. And of course, the third thing is that uh, variant Vazirani deals with unique set. So, it is exactly 1, but whereas here we are okay with odd even thing, right. So, the reason we want to go to the odd even, the parity from the unique set thing is that uh, the, there is no clear way to boost the probability of uh, success with the unique set setting. So, in fact, it is an open question uh, to boost the probability of success beyond this 1 by 8 n when we are in the unique set setting. So, what we will do is to move to the um, parity set setting which is automatic from the unique set because 1 means odd par uh, parity odd parity and uh, 2 means even parity. So, already the variant Vazirani gives something like this. Uh, if, if a formula psi is true, uh, meaning psi is satisfiable, then a psi is, uh, so I will just say true or satisfiable, or false or unsatisfiable. Uh, the reason being uh, when psi is true, I have to, uh, it, it has to be a simple Boolean formula, right. It cannot have quantifiers, but then I use psi for a quantified, uh, fully quantified Boolean formula. Um, so, when I say psi is true, think of it as something like some there exists uh, x, some, some, some phi of x or something, right. 
So, there is some way to satisfy uh, psi. If that is the case, then A psi has a uh, maps to a, a plus instance of uh, yes instance of parity set. If it is false, then A psi maps to a no instance of parity set right? so, or, or yes instance with zero probability. So, this is automatically, uh, uh, this is what Bailey and ought already gives us. right? Now, we will see how to boost this probability of success. Right? This is kind of what is Bailey and Vazirani giving us because, um, yeah, the only, the only issue is that the psi is not strictly speaking a Boolean formula. Right, but we can view it as uh, the first there exists. You can you can take it as a uh, as and fix the rest of the uh, variables. Okay. Now um, suppose we have uh, just like we performed arithmetic over the number of satisfying assignments, we can also perform arithmetic over the num of over the parity of the satisfying assignments. Right. Suppose we have formulas phi and psi. Okay. Now we can create formulas uh, depending on uh, if phi. Uh, you can do a boolean arithmetic with phi and psi. Let's see how. So, so let us uh, before that let us denote this symbol, this notation, as um, parity subscript x phi x denote the parity of the count of the x's that satisfy phi. Okay. So, phi is a formula that has x as a free variable, then this indicates the parity x phi x denotes the parity of the number of x's that satisfy phi. So, x could be a vector, x need not be just one variable. Okay. Okay. So, so, just to give some uh, uh, examples, so if x is just two variables x1, x2, then parity of x1 or x2 is equal to 1 because x1 or x2 has um, three satisfying assignments x1 true, x1 false, x1 true, x2 true, x1 false, x2 true, right. At least one of them have to be true. The, the, the non satisfying satisfying assignment is when both of them are false. Another uh, formula is when x is x1, x2, consider this x1 or x2 and x1 complement or x2 complement. This has only two satisfying assignments uh, 0, 1 and 1, 0. 0, 0 and 1, 1 are not satisfying assignments. So, the parity is 0. This is just to give you an or uh, an illustration of what this, this, uh, this symbol, the parity x symbol less. So, you can think of it as a quantifier right just like there exists x something or for all x something you can think of parity x as also as also a quantifier. Right? Parity x is just saying uh, considering all x. So, there exists x is asking out of all the x is there at least one x that satisfies. For all x is saying uh, uh, are all the x is satisfying. Parity x is saying is exactly an odd number of x's satisfying. Right? So, you can think of it as a quantifier as well. Okay. So, now let us, uh, let us come to the, the arithmetic using these quantifiers. Right? So, suppose you are given, uh, so basically we want to say that we, we can do Boolean arithmetic using these uh, you, and, and still remain, still give a parity uh, instance. So, consider parity phi and parity psi and you want to take an and of them and it will still be a parity because uh, you can take the multi uh, you can take the product or the and phi x and psi, psi y and as already mentioned this the number of satisfying assignments of psi x sorry phi x and psi y this will be the product. So, if this if this has m and this has m prime, this will have m times m prime satisfying assignments. So, so the parity, the, 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 the and says both of them are of positive parity, meaning both of them have odd parity. So, but then that is true when m and m prime are, m m prime is odd if and only if both of them, both of m and m prime are odd, right. So, that is what it is. 
If you want to negate the parity of psi x or phi x, you can just add 1 to that. We already saw how to uh, manipulate the formula, Boolean formula such that it, you can add something uh, to get 1 more satisfying assignments or 10 more satisfying assignments. So if you add one more, then the parity flips, right? Because odd becomes even with the addition of one and even becomes odd. So negation can be written as just, just, just adding one. When I add one, I don't mean to say that you add one to the formula. What I mean here is um, add or do the transformation that adds exactly one more satisfying assignment. Right? That is what I mean by this. And finally, or if you want to do or of this, if you have two formulas and you want to do the or, uh, the easiest, so we already saw negation and and, the easiest thing to do is uh, De Morgan's. So you can do a negation and and then again a negation. So, so negation is just adding 1. So we do uh, 5 plus 1 and uh, and psi plus 1 and then you take in, uh, you add 1. So basically it is negation and and then again a negation. Right? So this is, this is or using De Morgan's. So basically what we, what we are saying is that using parity we can perform uh, the boolean operations and still it will be a parity of it will be a parity uh, of some uh, boolean formula right so i can write the parity as i can write i can do logical boolean operations and still it will be uh, and get yet another parity boolean operation boolean formula right so all these building blocks will be useful in the in the, in the remaining steps. So just to ju just to summarize, what we have is the valian Vazirani uh, theorem, and this was our target. Right? Given a, a a sigma k instance, sigma k sat instance, we want to get to a Boolean formula such that there is a high correlation. If the if the instance the, the sigma k instance is true then the, the reduced instance should be AS instance of parity set with high probability and, and the other way as well. And this is a randomized reduction. So now, uh, as I said, there were the, one of the things that we needed to do was to boost the probability of success in the variant was running. And I promised that, uh, I said that by moving from unique set to parity set, we can boost the probability of success. So let us see how we can do that. So if you recall the Valian Vazirani uh, reduction, right? What did we do? Uh, we had a Boolean formula. We had a Boolean formula, and it may have it had it could have had many satisfying assignments let's say this is sat satisfying assignments right and uh, this is this is a set of all assignments uh, but what did we we wanted to transform to a formula which has exactly one satisfying assignment with high probability or with some probability so we con we what we did was we took and with some so we took a hash function and we took and with that uh, hash function maps to 0, so 0 power m. So some phi became phi and h of x is equal to 0, right. So h of x is equal to 0 is, I am just not, I am just somewhat abusing notation, but I am just saying that this is how we transformed it. So the point here is that this h of x was just chosen randomly. So first, if you remember, remember we just chose m uh, from 2, 3 up to n plus 1 and then so for, for uh, the range of number of satisfying assignments of phi and then uh, so that what then that was done randomly and then for that m we chose a uh, hash function from a hash fam, uh, pairwise uniform hash family, right. So this was completely independent of this phi. 
So it doesn't look at what phi is. It just looks at phi to get the number of variables, right? So this, 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 this is what I'm calling tau here. This is the same thing that I'm calling tau here. So what we can do is to repeat this many times, right? So we may get tau 1, tau 2 and so on. And the variant resident reduction was psi and tau, okay, psi and tau. So now uh, for this purpose, uh, for this, this part, think of psi as a uh, Boolean formula, okay, given psi So later in the main theorem, in this lecture, we will think of psi as a quantified Boolean formula. Now you think it is, think of it as just Boolean formula. Now we want, so now we can repeat and boost, right. So um, if psi is satisfiable, then with some probability, it, it gets mapped to a unique satisfying assignment. So how do we boost this one-sided error? So if you repeat it and you check for any of the instances, does it have at least one set or exactly one satisfying assignment, right? And if any of the instances has exactly one satisfying assignment, then psi also had exactly one satisfying assignment, right? Because, because we know it's one sided. If psi had no satisfying assignment, then all the, uh, all, all tau and tau two, everything, none of them will have any satisfying assignment because psi, psi itself does not have. So it's one sided error. So this is how you do it. So basically you are doing an or of uh, any of the, any of this psi and tau one, psi and tau two, does any of them have a exactly one satisfying assignment. And in order to boost it, this exactly one doesn't scale. So we will do it. Uh, we will consider the parity, right? So exactly ones mean odd parity and no satisfying assignments mean uh, even parity, right? So, so you want to take an OR of all these, this um, uh, psi and tau i, this parities, uh, the formulas, right? If any of them has a satisfying assignment, then uh, has an odd parity satisfying assignment, then psi was a yes instance, psi was also satisfied, right? This is what we know. And we already know how to do this, right? We already saw how to take OR of two, uh, formulas, two parity formulas, phi and psi. So same thing we will do here. We, we take psi and tau 1 plus 1, psi and tau 2 plus 1 and so on, psi and tau r plus 1, which is r is the number of times we repeat this. And finally, you do plus 1 and take the, um, and yeah, take the, take the, uh, take the parity of all. And this entire thing, you can you can convert it into one formula, right? The parity sign will be outside and it will be just one formula. Let us say the, the formula, the, the variable in the formula is z and you are, like, z is the like, collection of all the variables and you are, you are taking parity over z, right? So now we can, this, this repeated uh, uh, tau 1, you, uh, you, and this ends, you get this one formula and and psi is true or psi is satisfiable if and only if this gamma formula gamma had a has an odd number of satisfying assignments, right? So not if and only if with a certain probability. So now we need to compute the probability, okay? So I'll come to the random bit soon. So what we can do is, um, so the probability of success, what is the probability of success? The probability of uh, Maybe I'll just write it here. Probability of success is probability of error may be easier to calculate. It's actually what uh, in the if psi is not satisfiable, there is no error. We'll always say no. What is the probability that when psi is satisfiable, there is an error? So it is satisfiable, but every instance we try, we get a yes instance is mapped to no. So this is at most. So the, the probability of error in a single trial is 1 minus 1 by a 10, right? 1 minus 1 by a 10. And now let's say we, we raise it by some constant times c, uh, sorry, some constant times mn. 
So this will roughly become some e, so one so e power some constant times m, and if you choose the constant carefully, this this uh, there will be negative sign. You will get one by two power m. So because it's single sided error by repeated uh, trials, you get that the probability of error can be reduced to one by two power m. And the number where n is the number of variables, m is the m depends on the num the target uh, uh, probability that you are seeking, and c is some constant. It it, it will not be much, right? It will it not it will be not be dependent on m or n or anything. So what we have now is that if psi is satisfiable, then gamma is in the um, parity set with a higher probability with with a with high probability. If psi is not satisfiable, then gamma is in parity set with zero probability. So again, it's one-sided error, but the the error probability has become very small. The probability of success has become very high. So from one minus one by two power m, so we that is very close to one. We started with one divided by a ten, right? Right. So this shows that if psi is a so what we have actually shown is that if psi is a simple Boolean formula. So the first level of polynomial hierarchy, let's say psi is a Boolean formula. So psi, whether psi is satisfiable or not is like an NP question, right? NP complete problem. That problem we are saying that we can reduce to uh, checking deciding parity set, and that will do with high probability. Okay, and the error is even one-sided here. And this looks very much like what we wanted to show. Right? This is what we wanted to show. Uh, if psi is true, then uh, instead of psi is true, now we have showed psi is satisfiable, um, and the probability of success was one minus one by two power m in the case of yes instance, and the no instance it was actually zero, so it was better than the no uh, the case here. But the only difference is that we showed the case when psi is a, a formula with a single quantifier, there x is x. Now we want k quantifiers. We want to extend to k quantifiers. So how do we do that? Okay, so the, how can we move to k quantifiers? So what we do is uh, we just uh, basically it's what we saw already, Vedian Vazirani, and 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 then we will do induction on top of that, right? So it's just a bit more formal, um, and um, I'll be happy if you can understand what we have said so far. Um, so, if, if you if you are trying to prioritize which part I want to follow and which part I learn later, then try to understand whatever we have seen so far. Right. So the next the next part gets a bit technical. Um, so, but it it's more of what we have done already. Right. Okay. So now um, this is again the Vedian Vazirani theorem, right? But just stated in a bit different form. So I already mentioned this already, the, the points here already. Um, if there is a formula beta on n variables, right? Vedian Vazirani says if beta is satisfiable, then um, we will produce another formula um, uh, probabilistically such that the other formula has an um, exactly one satisfying assignment with, high, with, with some probability. right? And we notice that this beta uh, this formula is independent of beta except for the number of variables. The only thing that it, right, so it, it works for any beta over n variables over the same number of variables. Right? So, that is the same thing that I am writing here. In fact, I already said this over here, right, um, over here, right, I said this over here. So, we can, so basically, there is a polynomial time randomized reduction A that on inputs input 1 power n which is just to obtain the number of variables in beta it outputs a boolean formula tau okay that has x and y as a variable so y are y's are the additional uh, auxiliary variables that it creates where x is in uh, x is the the variables used in beta and y is some new set of variables right such that if beta has a satisfying assignment then uh, the probability that the new formula has uh, beta and tau has a satisfying assignment 
or has a unique satisfying assignment is 1 by a 10 and if not if it is not satisfiable beta is not satisfiable then it the probability that it has a satisfying assignment is itself 0. So, here it is just stated in the parity form. If it has a unique satisfying assignment then the parity is 1. If it has no satisfying assignment the parity is 0. Right? So, in fact this is actually variant was Rani's theorem says it is unique here and here it is 0. So, but then unique means parity 1 and 0 means parity uh, even. Right. So, it, it helps to view the variant Vazirani in this setting because uh, we already used the trick, but I am just stating it again because we will apply this, this, uh, uh, this idea of getting this tau's again and again. So, the main theorem uh, we are given. So, let us come to the proof of the main theorem. As I already mentioned, the main theorem states that you can take a sigma k set instance and get a, a, psi instance, uh, a, a parity set instance such that if the sigma k instance psi is true, then the parity set instance is true with high probability and if the sigma k psi instance psi is false, then the parity set instance a psi is false with high probability. Right. And we already saw this when k is equal to 1. Right. When k is equal to 1, it is just satisfiability and we already saw how this boosting can be done. Right. So, this, this boosting is, is we, we use the fact that it is a, uh, it is a, uh, it is a parity and we could not do this boosting otherwise. We do not know how to do this boosting if it was this unique set setting. Okay, so now let us say it is a sigma k instance psi. Okay, and the, so um, we say polynomial hierarchy. If it is if it is a pi k instance, you can take the negation, or you can view the pi k instance as a sigma k plus one instance. Okay, um, because if you, if you can do the if you can decide this, you can decide the negation as well. Right. So suppose this is sigma k instance psi, and suppose psi is there exists x phi x right where phi x itself has k minus 1 quantifiers. So, the, the first quantifier is x uh, there exists and the variables that are quantified by the first quantifier we call them x right. So, phi x itself has other variables that that have that I am not uh, specifying here. Now, by induction so again the base case is done base case is what we already showed before this. Now, by induction hypothesis, right, we are doing induction on k. By induction hypothesis, there is a randomized reduction that given k, k and m, it, it maps to an equivalent parity set instance. So, given so k minus 1 for uh, this, this, this phi x that has k minus 1 quantifiers, right, it, it constructs a parity set instance called parity uh, uh, parity set instance called uh, rho x z okay and um, rho x z where x is uh, for any fixed x so once you fix the x right phi x um, for a fixed x phi x just becomes a boolean formula right or a, or a boolean formula on the remaining uh, variables right x is fixed it is a formula with k minus 1 quantifiers on the remaining variables right. So, now on the same values of x I could write rho x z. So, when for a fixed x uh, that is fixed on the left hand side the x will be fixed on the right hand side. So, for this um, such that with high probability phi the truth value of phi x will be the same as truth value of uh, parity rho x z right. So, what I am saying is that given phi x, so think of phi x as just a k minus 1 quantified boolean formula. We are getting rho x z where x is fixed and z are the remaining variables. So, if you add up z or add up the number of ways to satisfy rho right upon uh, so x is fixed so the things that can vary are just z. 
So, if you count the number of way, uh, z for which uh, rho x uh, z is satisfied, uh, then there is a, uh, there is a uh, with if phi x is uh, satisfied. Uh, phi x is true if and only if uh, rho x z has an odd parity with high probability. Maybe I will just explain once again. Rho x z means uh, for fixed x for fixed x parity of number of z that satisfy rho x z a parity of number of z we we'll just write it again that satisfy rho x z for a fixed x it is the number of uh, it is a parity of this Again, this is just the induction hypothesis. It's it's the same statement as a theorem, but applied to a formula with k minus one quantifiers phi, right? And and because phi has some uh, uh, some free variables x, so let us fix the x to something and then then say this, right? Now uh, it is what we did already here. What we what did we do above here? We just uh, took an or with many tau's, we can do the same thing again, right? We can run the uh, the, the the valiant Vazirani oblivious that we already stated above. Order m n times, and we each time we get different tau values, tau uh, so tau one, tau two, and so on, right? And uh, so let let me denote this. Uh, the parity uh, value of uh, rho x z by beta x. Okay, so where the beta x denotes the the truth value of the of parity uh, of this, right? It's a, it's a, just a Boolean formula. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, what I will do is to uh, so maybe I'll just uh, maybe easier. So just I'll just uh, replace here that may be easier to view. Think of it as a shorthand, not as a separate formula. Okay, so beta x I will actually we'll use another color just to make it stand out. Parity z rho x z. Right? This is what it is. Okay. And this I am calling it as beta x. So basically, I can I can um, with high probability phi x being tr uh, true corresponds to beta x being a yes instance of parity parity set. Right, so think of beta as just a shorthand way of writing this. Right. Now we just do the uh, the standard thing. We uh, we take n instances or or r instances of valiant Vazirani, the the tau, and check whether and when we know that valiant Vazirani has a, um, has a one sided error, and we can boost the probability of success. Right, so we consider the formula alpha, which is the or of this multiple instantiations of uh, beta and tau j okay and we know that for each tau we have this one sided error probability that if beta is true then we have this uh, there is some probability of it it being a yes instance of parity set and if beta is false it's it is not going to be a yes instance of parity set so now let us consider psi which was the original formula from sigma k set now we we assume that psi was uh, there exists x phi x right there exists x phi x and 
uh, we already know that uh, by induction by induction hypothesis uh, there is a correspondence between the truth uh, correctness of phi x the satisfiability of phi x and uh, beta x being uh, being a s instance of parity set right or beta x being a s instance of parity set so the the probability of that being uh, 1 minus 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 right so now given beta is uh, a s instance of parity set now sorry uh, let us see how, how um, let us see how the alpha has how alpha performs right so now what is the probability that alpha is a yes instance of parity set so remember alpha is this or of this multiple instantiations of beta right so now what is the probability that alpha is a yes instance of parity set it is 1 minus it is not a no instance and what is the probability that beta is uh, it is a no instance it is a problem so rem remember the assumption is that beta is a yes instance right and um, so what is the probability that it's um, alpha is a is a no instance 1 minus each of these uh, r times that we instantiate tau all of them lead to a no instance so the probability of error is 1 the probability of success of one uh, one such trial is 1 minus a 10 and the probability of error is 1 minus 1 by a 10 right and the probability that all of the r trials are failures is 1 minus 1 by a 10 whole power r or the term that is over here right the term that is over here and um, so that is the probability that beta uh, for the correct beta alpha turns out to be incorrect and then we have also this term uh, which is a negative minus 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 term which is coming from the beta itself uh, the probability of beta itself being incorrect right and we can choose r such that the first term this term um, we can choose r such that this term is also 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 right um, we can choose r okay i have written in the bottom uh, r to be uh, order mn such that 1 minus 1 divided by 8 10 whole power r is 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 right so this is this can be done and so 1 minus 2 power m plus 1 sorry 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 and again 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 you add that add that up to get 1 divided by 2 power m so the whole probability of probability that uh, psi is a true instance yes instance and yet uh, the alpha is a no instance is 1 divided by 2 power m so that is the probability of success when psi is uh, true when psi is false which means there, is, there does not exist an x for which phi is uh, uh, satisfied right now what is the probability that beta uh, is the correct beta again this is coming from the previous level of induction so that the probability of error is 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 now suppose uh, so which means beta is a no instance the probability that beta is a yes instance is uh, 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 and what is the probability that alpha is a yes instance so we know that if alpha beta is a no instance then all the alpha will always be no instance because it, you, you are taking no instance and add of that it will always be a no instance the error in this process is one sided so the error the only error can happen only when beta itself to begin with was a yes instance so recall we are talking about no instance of psi and what is the probability that beta was a s instance 1 divided by 2 power m plus 1 and that is the only probability of error that can occur so 1 by 2 power m plus 1 is at most 1 by 2 power m so in either case whether psi is a s instance or no instance the probability that alpha is uh, consistent with psi is at least 1 minus 1 divided by 2 power m so that's how we get these probabilities and that proves the probability that we wanted in the main theorem if psi is true the probability that uh, so the a phi here will be alpha is a essence of uh, parity set is 1 minus 1 by 2 power m and phi is false psi is false means the probability that it is a essence is 1 divided by 2 power m now the final small thing that i wanted to mention is that uh, alpha is this formula right it's an or of uh, it's an or of 
mini parity set instances and with tau j right so now the only thing to uh, note is that alpha itself is a parity set instance so this is not really that difficult to see because we have already noted that we can operate uh, we can do all these operations we can do and or negation everything can be done in the parity world itself so it, it is just that that is remaining uh, just one second yeah so alpha is this and we can write uh, alpha is or of uh, this parity of rho xz and tau j and maybe it's simpler to write this entire thing the entire highlighted thing as uh, parity of theta xyz theta j xyz and we have already seen how to take the or inside the parity basically we use the de morgan's law right so we added one then then had the product and then added one again so we can do the same operation again so we can have a new parity sign outside maybe you call it w uh, just to take care of additional variables if any and then parity of theta 1 xyz plus 1 parity of theta 2 xyz plus 1 and so on and finally we add another plus 1 outside so we will get another big uh, boolean formula and we can take all the parities inside because uh, uh, what one can notice that parity of parity is also parity right so if if you sum up and uh, sum up some items sum up some integers and if you know the sum is odd then you know that exactly odd number of the inputs must be odd odd number of the terms must be odd if you have an even number of terms that is odd then the sum will be even so you can merge these parities to get one big parity you can represent alpha as one big parity uh, formula so that completes the proof right so the main ingredients of this proof again what what we want what we have shown is that uh, polynomial hierarchy is in bpp to the uh, parity p oracle bpp with the parity p oracle and we wanted to show that given a sigma such instance we can reduce it in a randomized fashion to a a parity such instance uh, such that the if if the input is a yes instance the output is a yes instance with high probability so the main ingredient was uh, repeatedly uh, the, the fact that variant was any was an oblivious uh, reduction that right? the, the the input uh, we just took an and with some some boolean formula and uh, the boolean formula was just completely oblivious of what the original formula was except for the fact that it, it looked at the number of variables right and then we noted that using parity operation we can do all these operation we can we can represent and we can represent or all of this can be accomplished using parity right and th therefore this allows us to boost the probability of success so starting from valian vezirani we boosted the probability of success to get the 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 first base case of the induction right uh, which was over here this is what we had and uh, then for the remaining uh, sigma k set right we use induction um, and assuming the previous uh, levels formula by induction hypothesis if that is a parity set formula already we could uh, we could again use the same trick we could again use the variant vazirani induct uh, instantiation to get sorry sorry again uh, to get a new formula that is a parity uh, parity set formula and we can choose m such that um, the um, the probability of success is high enough and in all of this the the in all of this the number of uh, repeated trials that we required is always polynomial so in this case it's order m n which is polynomial and we have at most Uh, k levels of of uh, uh, k levels uh, in the polynomial hierarchy so it's, it's all related polynomial in the length of the input formula and so what is left what we have shown is that uh, polynomial hierarchy is in bpp with a parity p uh, oracle what we want to show is that it is in p with a deterministic polynomial time with a sharp p oracle and this we will show in the next lecture right so we will we will we want a 
uh, somewhat of a weaker class as the base class instead of BPP we don't want randomness we want this deterministic polynomial time but then we will trade the parity instead of the parity p oracle we will actually use a counting oracle and this is where the counting will matter and with that i think i'll stop this lecture uh, thank you